What's going on my roundtable? My name is Excalibur596, and from the time I was an edgy little 10-year-old boy to being the edgy little 22-year-old boy I am today, I have loved shonen anime. Now, for those of you who don't know what shonen anime is, let me explain. Ever hear of Naruto? Ever hear of Dragon Ball? Well, if you know what those are, you know what shonen is. It's a bunch of cartoon people hitting each other, lots of cool powers, lots of cool fights, lots of injuries that no one should be able to survive from, but somehow do because friendship. But yeah, you get the idea. Now, any fan of shonen anime, including myself, always consistently asks the same nerdy question over and 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 over again until the end of time. Who would win in a fight? Well, my body pillow loving friends, we finally have a way to answer that question. Kinda. Of. Well, not really, but it's a cool idea. J-Star's Victory Versus is a fighting game made by the folks at Bandai for the purpose of getting a large roster of anime characters from Shonen Jump, the popular Japanese manga magazine, to start swapping hands to see who's the strongest in the Shonen Jump cast. And the game does this to a... Uh, somewhat successful degree? First off, the game looks just okay on the PS4, likely due to being a port of the PSP. Is that still a thing? It does its best to keep the basic style of every character and area, but still make it look like they're all in the same world. The problem is that nothing really stands out due to that very fact. Each of the characters' original art styles and colors are vibrant and iconic within their original series, but here it seems like they've been kind of watered down by this need to keep the art style consistent. While there have been other crossover games to do this with no issue, like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the characters in that game are unique enough compared to each other to stand out even with the aesthetic change. Something you can't really say about the anime characters here apart from a few outliers like Koro Sensei and Frieza, and even they're hard to pick out of the crowd. The models also feel less like characters with color and life, and more like animatronics. Especially when they talk, my god, I feel like I'm in Chuck E. Cheese looking at these lip animations. <laughs> Although that's how actual anime characters talk on screen, so I guess I can't fault them too much on that. Next up is the story. What story, you ask? Good question. Next subject. Okay, fine, I'll get more into it. The story in J-Star's Victory Versus is exactly what you'd expect from a crossover like this. Nothing really matters, they introduce themselves while being surprised by their powers, and there's the big bad guy that all the characters face together in the end where they all become friends. The only way this could be more predictable was if all the characters hated each other and fought only to find out it was a big misunderstanding. The only reason why this doesn't happen is because of the jump tournament where each character competes in friendly matches for a chance at a wish that they all reject in the end because protagonist. Even Goku refuses a wish and his entire series is named after the wish granting Dragon Balls. You think about that Bandai? Moving on. After picking between Luffy, Naruto, Ichigo, or Toriko as your main character, you're sent out on a boat to compete while making a small team of popular jump characters. While traveling the jump world, you upgrade your boat from a little raft to a pirate ship to a flying machine to a spaceship? What? Why? After flying around on a scavenger hunt, you fight a boss, go on another scavenger hunt, face another boss, go on another scavenger hunt, some sad aliens attack because they had to have some reason to use Naruto's talk no jutsu, and then everyone has a feast and the game is over. There are also a few side quests here and there, but they boil down to go fight this guy, get this item, or shoot this thing with a cannon. And you ended off getting an item, a support character, or possibly a new character. There, you happy now? So, the story isn't that great, but how about the music? Well, let me tell you, this game is chock full of wonderful tracks like this... ...this... ...and maybe even this! So what do you think? Anything you liked? What's that you say? You couldn't hear the music over everyone's incessant screaming? Well, there you go. That's the game. Okay, it's not like this game doesn't have any music, it's just that said music is constantly drowned out by people attacking, grunting, and crapping themselves. <laughs> and the only three tracks that we ever actually hear are the overworld music, the dialogue bad guy music, both of which you will almost immediately forget, and the constant, repeating, agonizing, casual dialogue music!
This song shows up every time you start a dialogue with anybody who's not evil, and there is a lot of dialogue in this game. The sheer amount of times you will hear this song will make you wish for the sweet release of death. death. Just stop talking so my ears can stop bleeding! Now, these two aspects of the game are... lackluster, to say the least. But how about the gameplay? How about the actual meat of this weeaboo scene, which... Well, surprisingly, the gameplay is actually pretty interesting. See, battles are waged between teams of one, two, or three characters and a support character that you can summon at any time. The goal of these battles is to attack your opponent until their HP drops to zero, but that's not the end of the match. Matches are won by how many times you beat your opponents in a single match. See that bar at the top? That shows you how many times you've beaten another character in battle. If you've been beaten, it doesn't mean you're out of the match or that you've lost, you simply get revived after a short period and continue fighting until one of the teams has had its characters beaten a certain number of times. These kinds of matches can make things interesting as there can be a different amount of characters on both sides, but the match can still go either way. Because even though it can be 3v1, the one character on the other side has multiple lives worth of chances to wear your three members down and take them out all at once toward the end. This is actually the way the boss battles are structured in this game, and it's the most difficult part of J-Stars to beat. I can't tell you how many times I've lost to these two. Oh, the roster is also full of characters that many anime fans, Weeaboo and Otaku alike, can enjoy and recognize. Now, this game came out in 2014, so don't expect to see anybody from Macadamia or Blacky Charms over there. But you've got the other popular series like Naruto, One Piece, and Dragon Ball, lesser known series like any of these, I'm more of a casual fan, and more well known series like Hunter x Hunter, Assassination Classroom, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and ugh, bo 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 Each of these 39 characters can dash, jump, combo with light and heavy attacks, charge up energy, and use special moves in a large 3D multi-floor stage with breakable buildings and objects to create fun and interesting fights. Each character also has a finishing move that can be used when you and your teammates activate Victory Burst when this little arrow goes to the far side of this little meter in the middle, and they can be devastating if they connect, taking off a huge chunk of health from whoever gets hit by it. Now all this sounds great, and overall it is, but that's not to say it's perfect. There are quite a few issues that keep this game from being one of the greats and leaving it at an okay. I'm gonna be using the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series as a comparison because I freaking love those games and they fix a lot of these problems. First of all, the movement in this game feels stunted and slow. Even dashing feels like you're just jogging to get your morning coffee, which is not something I expect from characters that do this on a regular basis. Compare this dashing to the dashing in Storm. Storm's movement is quick and fluid, but somehow even has the time to be flashy and visually appealing while also serving the purpose of locking onto an opponent and catching them off guard. Versus J-Star's dashing, which feels like you have weights on your legs and is only used for covering ground and nothing else. The controls to this game are also something to get used to as they decided on a control scheme that I found to be just a tad bit convoluted with an overuse of the R1 plus another button idea versus Storm where the control scheme is simplified and easy to understand. The fighting also tends to slow down when fighters are hit with combo finishers as fighters are either knocked flat on their butts or launched in the next week. Fighters gain a lot of invincibility frames after standing back up, which means you have to wait before attacking again, which feels really awkward as you stand around waiting for the guy you're trying to beat the tar out of to slowly get up off the ground. Uh, hey man, can I hit you yet? No, that's not fair. You already hit me. I need to have a turn. Ugh. And coming back down after getting launched takes way too long. While Storm has these mechanics as well, they don't take nearly as long to recover from, so it's not so much of a problem. I understand that this was so players don't get frustrated from getting constantly combo to the point they can't do anything, which, trust me, I appreciate. But I think they might have taken it just a bit too far here. Finally, there's a ton of balancing issues with the characters in this game. I found that multiple characters are better and easy to use than others blatantly. Characters like Vegeta, Naruto, Luffy, and Suna absolutely destroy everyone's collective bungholes, while characters like Ichigo, Lucky Man, and... 
bo 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 are insanely hard to handle and have little to no fighting presence. Ichigo in particular is absolutely terrible as his victory burst literally kills him after it's used. It's not even used as a cooldown thing like in the series where Ichigo eventually gets his powers back from his friends. He just straight up dies and gives the other team a point! And don't even get me started on the form changes with Victory Burst. Most characters with form changes, except Ichigo of course, just dominate the battlefield. I especially found this with the Saiyans, Naruto and Sasuke, and Luffy. The Super Saiyans bring a ton of pain along with their Victory Bursts, which are absolutely unstoppable. Especially Vegeta's, which is a gigantic laser that kills literally everything. Then, I can practically solo the entire game with Naruto's Sage Mode Rasen Shuriken. And both Naruto and Sasuke have form changes as their victory burst, which gives them a lot of added bonuses, along with the ability to use their final moves. And finally, Luffy goes into second gear at the end of all of his best combos, and can go into this state where he has hockey on his hands and legs to make him hit like an... Yeah, like that. Now, despite all these flaws, I can still confidently say that this game is fun. Whenever I got into fights in this game, they were always able to pick up and be fairly exciting and fast-paced for the most part. Plus, just using your favorite characters and finding new ones that you might enjoy that honestly make you want to live through their stories and find out why they were special enough to be chosen for this game is an experience I think can be worth a try if you're a shonen anime fan. However, with all the problems I stated before, I can't highly recommend this game to someone who is just getting into anime or fighting games, but rather consider it as a suggestion. For them, I would probably more likely recommend Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm or Dragon Ball Xenoverse. With these aspects in mind, Excalibur 596 gives J-Star's Victory Versus a 7 out of 10. I hope you all had a good time, make sure to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and ring the little bell in the corner, and I'll call you for the next council. Later.